Bipolar is when the sufferer experiences intense highs and lows accompanied by destructive behavior patterns. Wanting to live a fulfilled life more than ever, it was like a dark entity had attached itself to my mental, spiritual, and physical makeup. And this is really hard for me to accept because most of my life I've been such a high achiever with a zest for life. But then some sort of mania will kick in and make everything better. And I have to ask myself, am I better? Maybe I am healed. Or could all the trauma and loss gotten the best of me? But something deep inside me told me that my story wasn't done. It wasn't over. Now it was time to give a message to millions of people in the world who suffer with tremendous pain and silence. Since I reached out for help, I thought I could help others through positive action. Mental health issues not only wreak havoc on the individual, but the families of those suffering are affected as well. Suicide rates are climbing like never before. Mental illnesses are like the modern day plague that in most cases can't be seen. And having gone through tremendous losses of deaths, relationships, and financial well-being, I became self-destructive, wasting away whatever life I thought might be available to me. I lost all motivation, yet the spirit inside me screamed, Don't give up! I made a definite decision to give back to the cause that was haunting me. I just finished crossing four countries in Asia to raise awareness against the stigma. Now it was time to cross my home country, Canada the second largest country in the world. I named the ride Spin the Globe. I started off at mile zero, where a statue of Canadian hero Terry Fox stands commemorating his Marathon of Hope tour that took place close to 39 years earlier. Now this was motivating. I was going coast to coast. I was full of fear with countless sleepless nights leading up to the journey but it felt like I was being divinely guided through my own adversities and my empathy towards the people of the world. The first pedals began to spin towards the end goal over 6,000 kilometers to Prince Edward Island. For just over 60 days, I was with a friend who I now consider a brother. Steve, my cameraman representing World Trippin', would be filming a documentary about the ride called Mental Illness, The Ride to Wellness. He was my rock, along with daily calls back home to my family. I set goals every morning while going through the mental and physical pain to reach the daily mark. This reinforced my commitment to world service. Definiteness of purpose is essential to not only the individual who suffers from a mental illness, but for anyone, we all need a reason to get out of bed in the morning. That principle was slammed into my awareness throughout the ride. I gained such a sense of worthiness now because now just a few days into the ride, people from all walks of life and the media had now caught word of the ride. And it was then that I knew that this was much more than a ride. This was social outreach to the people of my country and the world to give hope and understanding. And above all, it was giving people the courage to talk about any mental health issues of their own. Long hours on the bicycle were the ultimate test. I was mentally and physically taxed, and I still wasn't at the halfway mark yet. There was a long way to go, just like in the field of mental health. When I look back at all the love and synchronicities along the way, I felt that this wasn't only a challenge, but a chance to see how many people are suffering. I saw myself and so many other people, our stories were the same, yet different. The same feelings, averaging over 100 kilometers a day. It was invigorating to know that this ride was gaining momentum. But my own peace and sanity came at night when Steve and I would have our talks. We would sit by a fire and we would appreciate everything that we were grateful for in life and how important a sound mind is. It was a dream from day one. I pushed myself like never before. And with the motivation of the people, things just began to flow. I rode with no expectations other than knowing that my purpose is to serve humanity in the trenches. And then something happened. After I made it through the steep mountains of the Rockies and the flatlands of the prairies, all bundled up in five layers of clothes, 
soaking wet and almost being knocked off my bike by numerous vehicles, I had a major mental breakdown. I had to visit numerous hospitals along the way to obtain my medication. This wasn't easy, and my anxiety really elevated. Never give up flashed in my mind nonstop. This wasn't Ryan's ride at all. This is for anyone that was open to understanding how we can all play a key role in the world with compassion and kindness. Some days after a ride, I could hardly walk, but I was so focused that nothing was gonna hold me back. I saw the country like never before, all the beauty behind the darkness, all the people that invited us into their homes because of their belief in what the ride stood for. It's not, seeing, it's not nice seeing anyone in pain, especially a loved one. Even if you do have a mental illness, it's still very possible to attain your dreams, open up and strive to be the best version of yourself, and also to be who you really are. On this journey, I not only got to know my true self better, but it also restored my faith in humanity. It's a beautiful world that we live in, and how much better would it be if we unite, bind as one, and above all, be understanding of the mentally ill, Magic started happening along the ride. Now receiving hugs and thank yous were commonplace, usually resulting in tears. Parents reached out to me that lost children due to, their, due to the mental illnesses. That just gave me more motivation to ride for the fallen. Through close to 60 cities that I slept in, big cities and small communities all shared the same commonalities. The sunsets, the people, the love along the way gave hope to a new outlook on what can be done to combat mental illness and what can be done to soothe the pain. Knowing that close to 50% of all people will experience a mental illness by the age of 40 wasn't really comforting, but these are days that in most cases command a very stressful lifestyle. The pressures of everyday life is so challenging and it's changing so rapidly that it's so hard to fathom. Then it came down to the last day. Emotional as it was, it was beautiful. After 70 kilometers, I arrived at the other end of the country and it was surreal. I jumped into the Atlantic Ocean with my bike in both hands, while well, hundred cheered and took photos. I felt like a transformation of complete humility had taken place and I wanted to stay underwater forever. All the precious moments of teamwork pounded in my mind and my heart that teamwork truly makes the dream work. So how do we take action towards the epidemic? Here's some ideas that come to mind. If your pain is unbearable, the right therapy is a necessity. Unity as one towards a fight that helps the misunderstood be understood. Other platforms, such as social media, obviously, to share your story is an act of courage. Making peace with your past is the only way to move forward and accepting who you are and implementing solution-based ideas. Because if mental health is ever to make leaps in a more positive direction of healing, it's essential to ask for help. So I ask, let's spin the globe together. Are you with me?